the ever-evolving geopolitical landscape, the interplay between technology and power is more pronounced than ever. The world watches as two economic giants, China and Japan, find themselves at a precarious crossroads, one where the future of global technological dominance is at stake. In recent months, the delicate balance between these nations has begun to tilt. Japan, under increasing pressure from its ally, the United States, has been contemplating further restrictions on the sale and servicing of chip-making equipment to Chinese firms. For China, a nation striving to ascend to the pinnacle of technological innovation, this potential move represents more than just an economic inconvenience. It is an existential threat. China's reliance on advanced semiconductors is no secret. These tiny chips, often no larger than a fingernail, are the foundation of modern technology, powering everything from smartphones to artificial intelligence. Yet, despite its rapid advancements, China still depends heavily on foreign technology for the most sophisticated chip-making equipment, a dependency that the United States is determined to exploit. In Tokyo, the corridors of power are abuse with anxiety. Japanese officials, well aware of their nation's vulnerability, are caught in a dilemma. The United States, a steadfast ally, has been relentless in its campaign to curtail China's semiconductor progress, urging Japan to tighten export controls. But Japan knows all too well the risks of provoking China. The memory of 2010, when China temporarily halted rare earth exports to Japan over a territorial dispute, still looms large. That action sent shockwaves through Japan's electronics industry, laying bare the nation's dependence on Chinese minerals. The lesson was clear. Economic retaliation from China could be swift and devastating. At the heart of this tension lies Toyota Motor Corporation, Japan's industrial titan and a cornerstone of its economy. In private meetings, Toyota's executives have voiced their concerns to the government. The stakes are high. Beijing's response to further semiconductor restrictions could involve cutting Japan's access to critical minerals essential for automotive production. For Toyota and for Japan as a whole, such a move would be catastrophic. The implications extend far beyond Toyota. Japan's semiconductor industry, spearheaded by companies like Tokyo Electron Landed, stands to suffer immensely. These firms are not just suppliers. They are global leaders in chip-making technology. Any disruption in their ability to do business with China could have far-reaching consequences, not just for Japan, but for the global tech industry. Yet, despite these risks, the pressure from Washington is relentless. Senior US officials have been working behind the scenes, negotiating with their Japanese counterparts to ensure that Japan falls in line with America's broader strategy. The goal is clear, to prevent China from accessing the advanced technology it needs to challenge US dominance in the tech sector. The United States wields a powerful tool in these negotiations. The Foreign Direct Product Rule, FDPR. This rule allows Washington to control the sale of products made anywhere in the world, as long as they incorporate US technology. While the US has so far refrained from using this rule against its allies, the mere threat of its invocation hangs over the discussions like a sword of Damocles. In Tokyo, the government's resolve is being tested. The Biden administration, confident in its ability to reach an agreement, is pushing hard for Japan to adopt stricter controls. But within Japan, there is resistance. Analysts and industry experts warn against blindly following Washington's lead. Japan should have its own philosophy, decide what's best for the country, and stand firm. One analyst argues, reflecting a sentiment that is gaining traction among Japan's political and business elite. As these discussions unfold, the clock is ticking. 
The political landscape is set to shift dramatically with the planned resignation of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, while officials insist that this change in leadership will not derail the negotiations. The uncertainty is palpable. The upcoming US presidential election adds another layer of complexity, with both sides eager to reach a resolution before the political winds change. Meanwhile, China is not standing idly by. In recent meetings with Japanese officials, senior Chinese leaders have made their position clear. Any move to further restrict semiconductor exports will be met with severe economic retaliation. The implications of such a threat are profound. Japan's reliance on Chinese minerals is a vulnerability that Beijing is ready to exploit, should Tokyo choose to side with Washington. The world is now watching as this high-stakes game of economic brinkmanship unfolds. For Japan, the decision is fraught with risk. Aligning with the US could solidify its position as a key player in the global tech industry, but it could also invite devastating retaliation from China. On the other hand, refusing to comply with US demands could strain relations with its most important ally potentially isolating Japan on the global stage. As the negotiations continue, the stakes could not be higher. The outcome of this confrontation will not only shape the future of Japan's semiconductor industry, but it will also have profound implications for the global balance of power. In this complex and interconnected world, where technology and geopolitics are inextricably linked, the decisions made in the coming months will reverberate for years to come. In the end, this is not just a story of economic rivalry, it is a tale of national strategy, of alliances tested, and of the relentless pursuit of technological dominance. As China, Japan, and the United States navigate this treacherous landscape, the world can only watch and wait, knowing that the consequences of this semiconductor siege will be felt far beyond the boardrooms and factories where it is being fought.